Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. It is time for another Obscurity in Literature. And hopefully this is something that not everybody has or has access to. And funny enough, uh, this is the subject of one of the very first videos on literature I actually did. Uh, if you want to go dig back into the annals of history of this channel, one of the first book videos I ever did was on Makoto Kobayashi's Dragon's Heaven, which was a book that my brother picked up for a ridiculously cheap price from Mandarake when they were here in the States, and is a love letter to Mobius and the, you know, forerunners of science fiction fantasy comics of Europe in the 70s, and a bunch of mecha stuff while we're at it. It's really cool. Anyways, I was wondering the other day, you know, what other stuff is out there? I mean, the guy's been a prolific artist, and then I remembered there's the Hyper Weapon books. So this is Hyper Weapon 2005, Yesterday, Today, and No Future. And immediately when I found out about these and I started doing some research on it, uh, I was just blown away by the ridiculous amount of stuff in these books. And right off the cover, you can see it's it's pretty fantasy looking. And one of the other apparent things right away, besides having some very interesting designs, is that we're not going to follow any kind of actual social conventions with this book. Uh, we have the cover going vertically for some reason, but then the book is actually designed to be horizontal. Go figure. And upon opening it up, so we're greeted with all kinds of little text blurbs. There's a story in here. And then we're right back to where things all started with Dragon's Heaven, which is kind of interesting. And as far as I can tell, this is all totally new stuff, or at least new for the purpose of this book. And the reason I say that is because I have done some research into the further books and you've got some of the examples of the covers here and one of the cool things is besides the fact that being a very prolific artist uh, Mr. Kobayashi is a very prolific modeler as well we got a lot of work you can see some of his uh, Mobius Arzak pages right there and then we start getting into just all kinds of very interesting designs now, I love this book because it's such a hodgepodge of various things. Old Gundams, original work. We also have a bunch of these fold-out pieces throughout the book. It's just really neat. Various Gundam illustrations. I mean, some big, fat, heavy mecha, if that's your kind of thing. If you like your mechs with thick proportions. Some of these, I mean, I can remember seeing even probably back in old, old ads in, like, Hobby Japan. Like I said, we used to sit there, go to places like um, Mile High when they were back in Anaheim. And for as much of the old stuff as is in this book, we also have a lot of the new. And I, we would just sit there and like flip through all the old books they had on the shelves. There was no way. We were just dumb, poor kids. We weren't going to be able to afford any of this stuff. Oh, who is the artist this stuff reminds me of with these big, ridiculous balloon bodies? That is a Dorvac. I don't even remember seeing that in here. Hyper Dorvac document. And then we're into Last Exile. I loved Last Exile. I thought that was a really cool show. And again, some really gorgeous schematics of these the airships. I think what they were called. They had a special name. And it's not even written in a human language. Van ships, that's what they were. The ridiculous, like I said, amount of content that is shoved into some of these pages. We've got line work, we've got CG work. Some of the warships. 
little bit of everything in this book, truly. Some original designs. And now we are changing the format of the book. Because why not, right? Grand Odyssey. I'm not sure what it is, but there is a ton of work for it here. And then for some reason, Gravion and Steam Boy. I did not know he was making Steam Boy models. Fortunately, the glare from the format of the book is not helping exactly. I enjoyed Steam Boy. I haven't seen it in years. Trinity Brood. Gankotsuo! Which was the uh, Count of Monte Cristo sci-fi anime update with his giant mech. Because, yeah. Again, some very interesting designs. I remember seeing a few episodes of it. Samurai 7. I really enjoyed the mecha of Samurai 7. They had that kind of Sakura Wars style old Imperial Japan vibe, but with a much more modern flair to it. These weird tin can Zaku Monoai guys. Their big base. I don't know how involved he was with the show or with any of this stuff, actually, but it's just kind of neat to see in the land ships. I mean, this is just like random background art. I'm assuming maybe he had some involvement. And I mean, these are some extensive. You know, just pencil studies. Some kind of trading card game. Now, I think this book in particular is probably the most varied of the various um, original art. Hyper Weapon books. Now you can tell which ones you've got because they are dated. And then because why not? We've got a UFO interceptor here. That's just the most random. Why? Why? I don't know, but it's cool. I mean, and I'm skipping over a ton of stuff in here. giant robo in here. Like I said, there is a lot, a lot to enjoy, look at, and it's like one of these books that every time I pick it up and flip through it, I'm going to find something new. Yamato. And speaking of Yamato, actually, I did, like I say, some extra research, and I found some of the other hyper weapons. And because why not? Why do we have to have anything work in the same format, right? <laughs> it's a lot bigger. It's a lot thinner. This is Hyper Weapon 2009. So as I said, this one is 2005, 2009. I'm going to try to pick up another one just to see if they continue the theme of being completely ridiculous in terms of how they are all put together. This one is predominantly Yamato themed. So you get a lot of cross sections of ships. You've got, you know, bridge views. Crazy pencil sketches. I mean, if you're a gearhead for airplanes, there's some really neat stuff in here. This book is almost all ships. And then all of a sudden, towards the back of it, we get into Colonial Vipers, because why not? I guess since we had the, you know, interceptors in the previous book, 
And this one's got a bunch of Battlestar Galactica designs. And the original ship. I love these stupid thruster binder things. And a little bit of the other stuff. So yeah, I think if you enjoy these kinds of books, which obviously if you're watching these videos and checking out this channel, you can see that I really do enjoy these kinds of books. There's a lot of fun to be had. Um, if you have any familiarity with any of the other years that these books were put out, by all means, give me a heads up. Let me know what's in some of them if you're curious about them. I will try to track them down myself as well. And if you always have any interesting leads on books that you'd like to see that I have yet to track down or already probably have, by all means, put them in those comments down below and we'll do our best to hunt them down because I know my wife loves having all the books around the house. So with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.